Ladies, gentlemen, nutters and pilferers, lend me your ears. I am most redolent this night with fine fortune and fancy, and I am feeling a little peckish as to the delights of riches humanity has to offer upon the menu of delights. You see, I've been thinking about it long and hard. Yeah. I've studied the biblical apocalypse for over 24 years. Not many people have done that. Not many people have focused on the horrifically scary portent that book has to offer in the name of God. I, unless you're insane, it is terrifying. Even as a believer, it is terrifying. Wouldn't angelic genocide and satanic rule with the mass martyrdom of Christianity be terrifying? Yes. But is that really happening in the world? Now, millions of you will probably immediately jump on and say, yes, yes, it's going off, it's kicking off now, it's all going off, the rise of the beast is occurring, Satan's in rule, the angelic slaughter is upon us, and millions are gonna die, billions, billions are gonna die. It's simply not necessarily, entirely, quite right to say the case, actually. Because if you look at the prophecies of the Bibles deeply enough, you will notice among the words of Jesus, there is a clue as to why we might not be in the last days at this present time. Everyone says we are. Christians is what makes half Christians Christians. I said it for ages. I, was, I, I had apocalypticitis, which is the belief that as soon as you read the apocalypse of the Bible, you then associate it with modern times, think, oh, it's the apocalypse. Presumably because old Trevor down the road got a bit barney the other day with a bad deal or some shit like that, right? I mean, we think the world is a terrible place because Jethro and Arthur like to do each other at the wrong end. And we think this is a sign of impending doom and evil and Armageddon and slaughter must take place because of their little love triangle. It's just nonsense, right? I don't do gay shit. But there is more than just gays going to hell in the Bible, if you believe in the Bible. Liars, murderers, unbelievers, idolaters, which could include Islam. They're all doomed, okay? But let's just bring it back a bit. War. Well, you say the world is full of war, but that's only because we've got negative lensing with multimedia exposure around the world with access to video cameras and writing tools and high-tech writing implements and communication systems that allow us to project every kind of darkness in the world to put it on news and say look it's all terrible this is the news right and they call it the news the news generally means it's really bad, apart from the last story, which is a little bit of glimmer of hope about a lost panda rescued, okay? And it's shit like that, but it's the same process. But people feed off the negative and then they read the negative and they expunge it in their mind to augmented levels of ludicrous notions of religious like chaos. Whereas an actual fact, 99%, more than 99% of the world is at peace. Did you not believe that? Do you not know that to be true? It is. Do the math. There are about 8 billion people on this planet. 1% of 8 billion, or oh, it depends if you're American or British on this. But let's just say it's 80 million. There are not currently 80 million, as far as I know, people embroiled in an actual physical conflict. There may be people affected by smaller grade conflicts. But every conflict is, of course, moronic. Jesus said to love your enemy is the way to be perfect before God. He, the Bible doesn't say you can't be perfect. Nowhere does it say that, technically. Jesus tells you how to be perfect in the realm of, and the eyes of God by loving your enemy, which includes initially, you'd think, a small level of psychosis. But is psychosis really psychosis? Or is it higher holy clarity for want of a term? The point is, we have a land of plenty and we're not the only one. Most of the world has enough food for its people. 
Really, they do. Otherwise, it'd be even worse. It'd be Ethiopia in the 80s all over the shop, right? Also, uh, war, famine, pestilence, death. Well, you know, in those days they shall cry out to die, but death shall not find them. Well, that's clearly not happening. We've just had a, a quasi-angelic genocide by Corona, and which I say angelic genocide because I heard a voice before it was happened saying, I'm going to set a pestilence among you. And it came true. So that was a, a powerful angel potentially. And there are seven angels at the beginning of the apocalypse. But don't, the apocalypse isn't over in a day, buddy. You know, and I, don't, I, I can think of way worse scenarios than what we are currently in. Right, the, for millions of people around the world, billions, right, we're doing much better than the whole portent of much of the prophecies. And which loops me back to my entire point in making this, which was to tell you why I don't think the apocalypse might entirely be upon us yet. And that is because in Jesus' warnings of the future, one of the warnings is, and the seas shall rock the boats so that the people should be screaming or something like that. It's to do with all of the tidal waves everywhere and the boats are rocking and screaming. And, and I, I just, I don't think that's happening, really. I think the seas are quite chilled still. And even another part of the apocalypse is there are no seas on this planet. Right, this planet has no seas in the apocalypse in the future, apparently. Okay, well, it doesn't take a genius to work out that's not going to happen by tomorrow lunchtime. So, all I can say is relax, chillax, to use a good neologism from the younger generation. I liked the word chillax, it was a synergy term, a compound word of chill and relax. And it, it says what it does, and it's a dual system of operations in etymology. And I really appreciate learning that word. So I think we can. If you believe in God, and you live in a Christian nation like beautiful Great Britain, still peaceful as the dreamy dove, whatever they say, whatever the rows, whatever the politics, the beauty of Great Britain still lasts like a law and order loving system of wealth generation which is good for all, humanity, okay? It's all very simple. It's just humanity done well, okay? So um, that's the end of the symposium for tonight. Maybe if you could entertain the notion, the apocalypse isn't quite as near upon us as we dare fear. In which case, we're all laughing. <laughs>